You know, they call them the dolls, but they're anything but. Somebody uh, suggested a new doll today. The new doll is called Plurality. It's a decentralized guessing game. This is its tryout. Instructions. Guess the most popular answers to surveys. Respond to survey questions for future games. All right. So we have to guess what the most popular result of a survey is going to be. I'm just making sure my screen region is going to look sensible here, okay? I've never played this before in my life. Your safety is not guaranteed. It's a little small, I'll admit. Can I... It's making the ad bigger, too. But you know what? It's because I've, I've been using uh, Lululemon. So they give me, they're giving me the Lululemon ad. Who was the first real rock star? The first real rock star, my guess for who would be first would be Elvis Presley. First real rock star. Enter. That's number one. Okay, we have to get 60% total. Who was the first real rock star? Last name only. The first real rock star, possibly Chuck Berry. He's number four. First real rock star. Um, I think that there's a chance that Mozart might be on here. I know that's insane. Mozart's number 16. I'll take my points. First real rock star. So we're thinking for the 1950s. How about Buddy Holly? He's number 13. How, okay, Buddy Holly's probably the most famous from the 50s. Get into the 60s. I mean, you got your, you got your Beatles. Like, you think it's possible that, like, John Lennon might be on here? He's number 12. Do you think it's possible that Paul McCartney would be on here? He's number 20. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm fading here. I must be missing an obvious one between Elvis and Chuck Berry. Is it crazy to think that Beethoven could be on here? He's number 28. I'll take it. First real rock star. Can I, can I throw you one that's crazy? What about Jesus Christ? He's number 60. All right. 12 guesses left. We got to get another 24%. But Elvis is literally like 100% of my total so far. <laughs> the first real rock star? I mean, maybe Gen Z is doing this quiz. I know this sounds insane. What, what about, okay, start with Mick Jagger. Number 11. Give me a David Bowie. Okay. No, I the, saw this. the handle on our uh, knife sharpener fell off, but it dropped the sharpener into the knife block. So I don't know. I need to buy like a magnet or something like that. No, to... I, just, I could just kid it out, but I thought you got an espresso presser. <laughs> Honestly, last night we were so uh, tired that the handle fell off and I just said, not today. <laughs> I'll deal with that later. Turn it upside down? Bro, then all the knives are going to fall out. Are you crazy? <clears throat> now, this is where I'm getting insane, okay? Because, like, I don't agree with these answers, but I think it's possible that Kurt Cobain could be on the list if someone was, like, younger. He's number 19. He, he clears Paul McCartney, obviously, by one. By zero, actually, now that I think about it. This is, this is very tough. We have nine guesses left. We got to get another 20%. I think I got to start to think about the 1950s. I'm missing some artists from the 1950s. What about Frank Sinatra? He's number 30. He's not really a rock star. What about um, Little Richard? I don't know his last name. His last name is Richard. Oh, I'm in trouble. Um, what about Bob Dylan? Again, not really a rock star, but maybe in the vein. Was there like um, a, a Digimon to Elvis Presley's Pokemon? Were there people that were like, yeah, Elvis is more popular, but actually like Bill Haley, Bill Haley was first. Oh, no. <laughs> what about the big bopper? Bopper was not a survey response. <sighs> Ravioli is not an industry term. Jimi Hendrix? 
That's number three. Who the hell is number two? Elvis Presley, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Janis Joplin. Number 70, Steven Tyler. I'm screwed. I, mathematically, I bet it's impossible. Unless number two has like a ton of points. I don't even, I can't even imagine who number two would be if it's not Jesus Christ or Beethoven. God. God was not a survey response. <laughs> um, Charlie XCX. Maybe people were memeing it up with their answers. <sighs> Taylor Swift. 24. That's honestly, I'm not even anti Taylor Swift at all, but. I think plurality, plurality just failed the, the tryout. Because I have to now be held responsible for the meme answers that people put in on the survey. This needs to be vetted by like an actual survey corporation or something like that. It can't just be uh, you know, anybody typing in whatever they want. That's how we end up with like 10 years of people being like, bro, you'll never believe it. They called it... Uh, Rocky McRockstar face. <laughs> I have no idea. Tupac. Is uh, sorry, Shakur. Disrespectful. I actually have no idea. I I I mean now I can't even think of a oh Freddie Mercury. What about Freddie Mercury? Maybe ooh he's number seven. We still got a lot of points. We, we failed today. Number two? What's, how do I know what number two is? Michael Jackson is a reasonable guess. I understand he's not much of a, a rock star, but still. Number two was Elvis? Click to see top responses. <laughs> Sign up. Step one, uh, option one, email and password. Option two, Ethereum wallet. <laughs> All right, I'm just plurality. I'm not sure if, listen, I think it's a really cool app. I think it could be fun to play on stream, but it doesn't, there's no like right answer. And that's, and especially if number one was Presley and number two was Elvis. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Some of y'all still don't get it. You can use more than one rock star on multiple guesses. All right, we're so we tried, we tried. Why would I need to like I won't even connect my Google account to crosswords or dictionary.com to play crosswords? Why the hell would I connect a, a cryptocurrency wallet to play a Wordle clone? Like that's <laughs> do I earn cryptocurrency for getting the right answers? <clears throat> do I I'm they, they put a hit out on me? Okay, 2.51 billion. They export scented mixtures, industrial fatty acids, oils, and alcohols, gold, suits, raw sugar, and sawn wood. I don't know if they import the wood and they're just incredible at sawing or, or what, but... Um, so maybe this is like a, an idiotic question. When I see sugar, I think of the Caribbean. Can I also tell you, alcohol above 80% ABV, literally, this has to be whatever company or whatever country exports Bacardi, right? <laughs> 30 million is not that much like for a total export, but, but sawn wood. But then gold, I always think of gold as like not being on islands. And that might just be idiotic of me, but I always think of like Canada's got a lot of gold. 
Africa's got a lot of gold. South America's got a lot of gold. It's not like, you know, they were like, check it out. We just landed on Cuba. There's gold, like immense amounts of gold. I think you need like, you need like a, I mean, I'm, I'm just being ignorant. I was going to say, I think you need a lot of land for that, but I don't know how deep the land goes versus the depth of a land that's an island. You get the idea. Planes, citrus fruits, so we're probably around the tropics. Zippers and brochures, frozen beef and plastic lids. Um... I'm just going to guess something in the, in the Caribbean. 2.51 billion is not like zero right now. <clears throat> By the way, someone, someone from the Netherlands took serious issue with the fact that when there was $420 billion of exports, I said that's too much to probably be the Netherlands. They made a post on the subreddit that was like, I just want NL to know that actually the Netherlands has a lot of exports. Okay, I noticed you didn't say they have more than 420 billion, which is what the fuck I said in the video to begin with. I didn't say they don't have a lot of exports. I just said $420 billion is probably too much to be the Netherlands. And then it was the UK. Does the Netherlands export more gross product than the UK? No? Then we agree. I don't know why you took offense. But I'm, I'm still, I'm going to guess the Caribbean first. I'm going to say that this is Dominica. I don't even know if that's in the Caribbean. Okay, no. It's maybe in Africa, 11,000 kilometers to the southeast. It's northeast of Lesotho. Okay, that's, that's, I mean, we got much closer on the second guess. Now it's a, a imagine the apple in your head sort of game. Um, Uganda? Son of a bitch. <laughs> embarrassing. Uh, 3,000 kilometers. I honestly, in my head, it goes Uganda. Lizutu. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Zambia. Much closer to Zambia. Could it be uh, South Sudan? F fuck. Um, 3,000 kilometers south of Z Eswatini. Oh, it is Eswatini! Let's go! Holy cow. The Netherlands have $600 billion in exports, actually. I don't believe you. I don't believe that the Netherlands exported more than the UK. Why aren't they in the G8 then? Or the G7. Sorry, I'm in an antiquated uh, world. Political reasons? Bro, I'm not trying to insult the Netherlands. Even Canada is in the G7. In 2021, Netherlands was the number 17 economy in the world in terms of GDP, number six in total exports. All right, well, geez, never mind. Wait, wait, was the UK number five? That's all I'm asking. Netherlands total exports recorded 76 US billion US dollars in December 22. Compared with 78 billion dollars the previous month, is that a year-over-year -year measurement, or is, are they exporting eight, $80 billion monthly? That doesn't... Because that's a trillion dollars a year. Come on. I, was, I think that's the year-over-year the -year based on the month, the same way we do inflation. What do you export from the UK? Fucking stinking bishop cheese? What do you export from the Netherlands? Windmills? This shit's too heavy to put on a ship. 
tulips? What is it, like a dollar a bulb? I guess I got to remember that like most of that Netherlands export is probably not making it to Canada. It's pr like they literally border like 17 countries in Europe. It, that, that tanker is getting picked clean before it makes it to the Pacific Ocean. All we're getting is the, the Carlsberg or the Heineken. <laughs> And a little Stroop Swaffle, Stroop Waffles. Pacific? Yes, Vancouver's on the Pacific, uh, it's on the Pacific Ocean. Atlantic? If you give me a couple minutes, I can go check outside. I'm pretty sure it's on the Pacific, though. It crosses the Atlantic first? Okay, I don't live on the ship, I live in Vancouver. I'm not going to get on the ship and, and ride it all the way to my own house. I'm already here. You got to look at a map sometimes. Also, China's not in the G7. Do you think that they're not one of the top seven economies? Listen, I got no, nothing but respect for the Netherlands, but you're not China. Don't embarrass yourself by comparing your economy to China, okay? All I know is Canada is in the G7, Netherlands are not, a.k.a. we clear you. We stay winning. Was Jim Carrey born in your country? No. Was Keanu Reeves born in your country? No. Was Alanis Morissette born in your country? No. Did the star of Austin Powers cut his teeth at Second City, Toronto? I don't think so. Is Justin Bieber from your country? No. Was Max Verstappen born in Canada? I don't know. I don't watch soccer. Okay, take me to global. Anyway, we're all losing sight of the fact that I'm a genius for getting Eswatini to begin with. Take me to Globla. I got a level with you. Globla. I'm never buying a Nissan Pathfinder, okay? We should start in Eswatini. Holy fuck. It's 12,000 kilometers away. Dominica? And now I can actually learn where Dominica is on the map. It's, it's even further from Dominica? Now, can I, can I give you a North America moment right here? I literally... So I knew that these existed. Maybe up to this one. I did not know that this chain of islands existed here. I literally thought it was, I think this is Dominican Republic and Haiti. Maybe this is like Trinidad and Tobago. And then I, I didn't know that any of this land existed here. I basically thought it went like Haiti, Brazil. <laughs> That's Puerto Rico. My ass is like so Canadian, honestly. So, this so Puerto Rico should be like right here. What is it doing there? It's the same thing when you tell me Hawaii is part of the United States. Oh, really? Doesn't look like it's part of the United States. This shit looks like it's on a moon of Uranus. Anyway, long story short. <laughs> 10,000 kilometers from Eswatini. I, I mean, I think it's, we're having a Central Asian moment again. Let me go Mongolia. It's very close to Mongolia. Okay. <clears throat> 790 kilometers. I think it's got to be... I, I hate to say it, but I think it's got to be down here. Maybe it's Bhutan. <sighs> hmm. Bhutan is colder. Maybe it's over here. Maybe it's Kyrgyzstan. That's also... that's. Cooler again. It's cooler than Bhutan. So maybe it's over here, which is just China, but China borders Mongolia. Maybe it's North Korea, although this seems like more than 790 kilometers. Wow! <laughs> Sheesh! 
Okay. Maybe I will buy a Nissan Pathfinder. Box office game, July 20th, 2012. We got some big movies here. <laughs> we got some big boys. I'm, I'm cracking it here, one second. So when I think 2012, what do I think of? I think of, uh, I think of a Warner Brothers film that's called The Dark Knight Rises. Boom. That's a gimme. I, feel, I think of, this is probably The Amazing Spider-Man, Sony Pictures, 228 million. Boom. This 2012 Universal's kind of throwing me for a loop. It's pre-Jurassic World, which is the only Universal Studios movie I can name, next to Back to the Future. And Ghostbusters, I guess. I'm trying to think of rides at Universal Studios. Now, Walt Disney... Five weeks, $208 million, it's not the Avengers. I'll tell you that much right off the bat. Okay, let's learn something here. Week two, huge movie, 20th Century Fox. This is, uh, I wanted to say that it's X-Men, Days of Future Past, but it's too early for Future Past, and it's too late for um, First Class. Could it be... The Wolverine, I kind of feel like that's 2014. Okay, okay, you got me, you got me, you got me, whatever. Give me the actor, Ray Romano. It's a fucking animated movie, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Tagline, the end of the world is just the tip of the iceberg. Ice Age 3 collision course. Ice Age, holy fuck. Continental Drift? Okay, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Um, Universal made a ton of money. Actor one, Mark Wahlberg. This is a Transformers film. It's the Age of Extinction. Genre. Comedy fantasy? Tagline. Blank is coming. This is Ted 2. Holy fuck. Never mind, it's Ted. July 2012? Yeah, that makes sense now that I think about it. Okay. That made too much money, honestly. And then a Disney movie, let me get genre, is animated. Animated to me, this is my new Disney play, okay? If it's Disney, we go genre first. If it's animated, we don't give a shit about the actor. We go straight to the tagline. Change your fate. This is too early for Frozen. It's too late for The Princess and the Frog. I think it's too early for Tangled. Could it be Enchanted? Enchanted is not animated. <laughs> actor one, Kelly McDonald? Actor two, Billy Connolly. Oh, fuck. Reveal all hints. It's brave! Oh, said in the Scottish Highlands, what was I thinking? Oh. <laughs> it's brave. Didn't do so well today, but we did get all five. Although, now that I think about it, we actually only got four. What a weekend at the movies. This must be around the time uh, Prometheus came out, too. Why is Prometheus not in the top five? Hey, have you watched The Bear yet? Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Prometheus Deadass did not come out in 2009. You have the luxury of just looking it up before you type misinformation. This shit came out in 2012. June 8th, 2012. Look at that. Cine 2 Nerdle. I see Easy A. Easy A, Scarlet Letter, High School. I see New York, something. I see the whole nine yards. 
the whole nine yards is a dentist. That's Matthew Perry is a dentist. Okay, we got Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, Easy A, and the whole nine yards. Now we got to find a connection. I mean, that was insanely fast. Now I'm just thinking the longest yard. Animated. Isn't there a movie called Nine? Which is an animated movie? Or am I thinking of like I Am Number Nine or something like that? Hidden Dentist? Crouching Tiger Hidden Dentist. Is it... Could, well, now I'm like, could it be Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon? But no, that doesn't make sense. New World. The New World. Un, a whole new... A whole new world! Aladdin! Okay. It feels good. Honestly, the fifth one is always the hardest to get. When you getting the first four is easy. Movie to movie has not changed today, by the way. So we're passing here. Okay, guess the game. This looks like a. Um, this looks like a sweary joint. Like, this looks like Deadly Premonition 2. A blessing in disguise. It's not. Metacritic score of 86. Okay, it's definitely not. This looks super familiar to me. Is this Ghost Trick Phantom Detective? <laughs> Xbox 360, PlayStation 3. You kind of look like a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game now. Could this be Indigo Prophecy? Poolside Chill, Duder, Sammy and Eric. Bro, this is a Tony Hawk's pro skater for the 360. She does like American Wasteland or something. I guess it's THPS 5 released in. Oh, it's probably just Skate Dummy. You got there. I had already washed out of, uh, of skateboarding games by 2007. I was exclusively playing rock band at this point in my life. It's skate, dummy. I one shot hurdle. Congratulations, Jay. That means you had the same number of shots that the New Jersey Devils had last night. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I will say, I, I, while I was doing some chores, I had the, uh, the Leafs and uh, Lightning game on, and it got me good, man. When the Leafs went down 6-2 and the camera panned to like an eight-year-old kid in the stands wearing a Leafs jersey and like a huge gold chain with tears in his eyes, I was like, not the crying kid, man. Like, <laughs> Glitz, it... Poor kid had to be born a Leafs fan. He could have been born a Canucks fan. And I'm living life in the... It's an age of leisure right now. We didn't even make the playoffs. There's nothing to be sad about. Like, uh, game though. Today's Hurdle song is problematic. Oh, it's Blurred Lines by uh, Robin Thicke. This is, today's game though, is, um, this is Duke Nukem Forever. No, it's Duke Nukem 3D. Yeah, okay. Eat my shit. <laughs> hey, game though, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Game though, listen, game though classic is a, is a bop. Game Dull um, artwork is a bop. You have made the most devilishly difficult game of all time with Game Dull Guess. It's, uh, I think I've gotten it right like one time. It's delightfully devilish, Seymour. And it was the Binding of Isaac, yes. It's, that's true. This is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. 
This shit is Mega Man X, but that's not Mega Man X1. This is like Mega Man X, I'm going to say 2. Hey, there you go. He's crazy. I've played enough Mega Man X to know that this is a Mega Man X, but it's not the Mega Man X I'm used to. I rented Mega... So I, I bought Mega Man X from Walmart when I was a kid and uh, eventually beat it. It probably took me like three years as a child. Then I rented Mega Man X2 from, the, uh, from Jumbo Video. Couldn't beat like an ostrich boss, probably this guy right here. Tried three times and said, fuck that. Went straight back to Mega Man X1. I'm sure Mega Man X2 is probably almost as good. But uh, I just, I, at that point, I think I had just had enough. I was like, this shit is too hard. Let me just do it. Chill Penguin, Storm Eagle. You take Storm Eagle into... Usually then I go Flame Mammoth and you get the, the charge shot upgrade. Yeah, then you can do... I mean, at that point, you can basically do whatever you want. You could use Chill Penguin to kill Spark Mandrill. You use the electricity to go get Roll Armadillo. I think Roll Armadillo is really good against uh, Launch Octopus. And then Launch Octopus is really good against Sting Chameleon. Sting Chameleon... Or maybe really Launch Octopus is really good against... Uh, Okay, Boomer, and that, yeah, anyway, long story. The, yeah, because the Boomerang's really good against the Chameleon. Sorry, it's been a while. Burp, 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 burp. What, a, what a game. Dark Souls 2. Sorry, Dark Souls II. Me when uh, Ozzy Osbourne writing the title of something in Roman numerals. I, I, da, ra, Ozzy Osbourne typing uh, the title of the third Dark Souls game. I, I, I did it, did it. Anyway, so it's, it's, it's so hard to glean information from this, man. So it's third person and also something else. It's single player, multiplayer, and co-op. No, it's some combination of single player and or multiplayer and or cooperative. But there can only be two of them or there could be one more. And then it's a role playing and or adventure game, maybe with other stuff. And it probably came out on the PC. This is PUBG Battlegrounds. Okay, it did come out in 2017. It's third person and first person and something else. It came out in 2017. It was not published by Blue Hole. And it is a, sh it is a shooter and also a role-playing game and maybe an adventure game. Hear me out here. This is uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Wrong. That's, you're wrong on that. But do, do you like how I managed to at least combine these three to get something out of that? I was pretty impressed with myself. It's one of the best guesses I've ever made, even though it ended up being wrong. 2017. It's not made in the Dawn engine, just in case you were curious about that. It's not published by Square Enix. You might think instead about something like Ubisoft. Like maybe this could be Far Cry 5? No, it's, it's one year too late, idiot. Um, it's not published by Ubisoft, or at least not Ubisoft Montreal. It's not in the Far Cry saga. Seeing a lot of yellow blocks here, which is very tough to deal with. This could be an indie game. Could be an indie first person, third person, first person, third person, third person, first person, shooter, strategy, adventure, role playing game. Um, Panzer Dragoon Orta. It's maybe it's made in Unity, a Unity first-person shooter. I hate to do. I'm like I'm tapping already. What the hell came out around this period? The Evil Within. Nope, not even close. And just so you know, it was not published by Tango GameWorks or Bethesda Softworks. It was not made in the ID Tech Five engine. Um, Give me a one-time clue, please. It was made in the Unreal Engine, but just not Unreal Engine 4. <laughs> um, 
See, this is my only thing. I, Gamedal, if you're still here, I feel like on on Game Guesser, the um, the clue should never give you perspective, mode, platform, or genre. I feel like it should always give you like either year uh, or publisher, just to like narrow it down. Because the Unreal Engine, man, it's tough to conjure a list of games from 2017 made in the Unreal Engine. Like that's tough. Or you could just keep it hard. I mean, that's also fine. It's definitely going to be Fallout 4. Uh, it wasn't published by Bethesda Softworks. Also, it's not made in the creation engine. It's made in the Unreal Engine. What's made in the Unreal Engine? Unreal Tournament. Doom? Dooms? Doom? Doom? Doom 1? It's not Doom... <laughs> it's not what I meant. <laughs> not what I meant when I typed Doom. I mean, and now I'm just realizing it's called Doom 2016, so that couldn't have been right anyway, but that's not what I was going for. Um, as made in the id Tech 1 engine. It looks like a graphing calculator. I'm going to say this is Super Mario Brothers. Uh, is, this is definitely Super Hexagon. And it's definitely... Okay, so we got some information. It might be a music game, or it might be an indie game. An indie shooter... Role-playing, adventure... So is every game mashed into one? It's WarioWare Inc. Mega Micro Games. Ark Survival Evolved. Well, I'll just be honest with you. Odds of me getting this one were pretty low. Even if you gave me the publisher, I would have gotten it wrong for sure. If you said this was made by Snail Games USA, I would have been like, I don't even know what it is. So you, you got me on that one. That one, there was just no chance that I was getting that one. How do you not get how this works? Yellow means at least one is correct. Yeah, but you have to do matrix multiplication because sometimes you get a yellow on like a, a single player and then you also get a yellow on multiplayer cooperative and then you also get a yellow on like isometric first person and then your ass is like trying to do the like to figure out what and now you're like, okay, I think it's a first person uh, isometric strategy game that was made in the id Tech 3 engine. Okay, good luck, motherfucker. Go figure it out without looking it up on Wikipedia. Oh, it's Command and Conquer, Tiberian Sun. Hello, Apollo. I don't do the Mario hurdle, okay? Because every time I play Mario music on the stream, I get uh, content ID matched on YouTube. Also, I only know like three Mario songs. I know. And I know. Is it Mario dash hurdle dot glitch dot me, Apollo? I think so. I don't want to get my Ethereum wallet jacked like I did on plurality, okay? If this doesn't start with, doo -doo 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 -doo, I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, that's, that's fucking, uh, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. that's Donkey Kong Country. That's, what is this, April Fool's Day? That's not a Mario Hurdle. That's the title theme of Donkey Kong Country 1. I got it right, by the way. I thought Mario Hurdle was all Mario music. I got it right, anyway. And then it goes, it starts with the monkey noises. Oh man, what a what a song. You're right. I'm I'm glad I did it today. Nintendo's gonna be like, this guy owes me 20 to 30% of his salary for the rest of his life. Anyway, worth it though. It was worth it to hear the first 16 bars of that song one time. Now when that when Nintendo ruined that guy's life. Was he called Gary Bowser before he decided to hack Nintendo? Or did Nintendo make him change his name to Gary Bowser as part of the settlement? 
His name was legitimately Gary Bowser. I thought Nintendo would be like, plus you got to change your name to Bowser. Anyway, so today's Rotten Tomatoes Daily. A, a mid-comedy horror from 1989 with two words. I mean, Dead Alive is not mid. I have no answer. It's Death Becomes Her. Just by watching it, one fears having remotely acquired pernicious anemia. <laughs> Blood. Simple, which is also not a, a 54 on the audience, please. Love that roach. Bob Grimm from Reno News and Review. Next clue. The film is dominated and destroyed by Mr. Cage's chaotic, self-indulgent performance. What is Vampire's Kiss? Starring Nicolas Cage. We win these. See Renfield in theaters now. Today's Chrono Photo Daily. What the hell, dude? Chrono Photo must be run by someone from the Netherlands because they're always trying to get us to guess like Formula One. So this is... Um, I'm going to have to guess that this is Monaco. I'm, I'm kidding. I got you. I mean, this looks like a mid-2000s era photo to me. If this was a photo from like an iPhone in 2019, I could actually like see people's faces, not just like uh, what color t-shirt they're wearing or not wearing. Just trying to see. Is that a, is a Ford Focus? It's a Target car. UPS sponsored it. For me, I'm going to say that this is a 2006 jam right here. It just looks like 2006 to me. It's 2004. I'll take that. DKNY has sponsored this city. MasterCard has sponsored this city. This could be because there's like a world event happening here. I don't know. This one's just tough. This feels like maybe this is Denmark. Not that we need to know the, the, the place, but the place might give us a clue as to the year. Or maybe, you know what? Maybe this is Lillehammer 1994, and this is the Winter Olympics. Although I will say, like before I click send, this photo appears, like this does not look like a car from 1994. This looks like a car from like the mid 2000s. This is from the 90s, early 90s probably. These feel like 90s cars and then like a, this is a, maybe like an 02 or something like that. Pull me up to 02. 1996 motherfucker. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Washed. It's the Parliament Buildings, circa. I mean, you can't see anything in the fucking photo, which means the camera was pure ass. This shit is like 1902. We, we take those because we didn't have any options. Welcome to the... I don't know what it is. It's the Netherlands again. Dude, I'm telling you. This guy's had a long day. <laughs> you could just tell. His shirt does not say balls. It says ballus. It's Dutch for balls. I, I mean, this looks like 2013 to me. 2020? This is like the Russian military. This is the rise of the Workers' Republic. But they're not wearing like the Command and Conquer garb. This might sound crazy. I almost feel like this is a colorized photo from pre-Second World War, but post... Uh, Soviet Revol or Russian Revolution. 
Like, I feel like this is a colorized photo from like 1913 to 1938 or something like that. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to put us in 31. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is from literally 1984. I know how this sounds. Like, I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm just, I'm admitting ignorance. I'm not glorifying it. But when I think of, like, more con contemporary Soviet military garb, I think of, like, the olive green with the the pauldrons and then like a lot of medals here and then the hats do like the golden eye thing you know what i mean the golden eye hat this is ceremonial garb i mean this looks like the these look like volunteer workers at fort henry man It's a good little joke for the Kingston locals here, but not even close. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously not even close. Okay, we got 25-12 today. That's pretty bad. <clears throat> Housel. Well, I'll remember listed fun today too, okay? It's a nice looking house. It's a nice looking part of the world. This could be in Southern California for sure. Um, to me, this looks like a 3,500 square foot house in Southern California. I'm going to start the bidding at 4 million and we'll, we'll get information from there. That's too high. Okay. It is in California. I don't know where Westlake Village is. Maybe it's a, it looks a lot smaller on the inside than I thought. I'm going to adjust down. I'm going to say this is 2,000 square feet, and I'm going to start the bidding at 2.5 milli. That's too low. Okay, we're going to win today. It's, it's actually, I was correct. It's 3,300 square feet. Um, so let's go with 3.3 million. Let's, let's say they price it at an even roughly uh, $1,000 a square foot. Sure, why not? That's too high. <laughs> Five beds, three baths. It's a pretty reasonable ratio. I don't understand these houses that have more uh, bathrooms than bedrooms. That, that always throws me for a loop. Because, like, you could think about it. On average, one bedroom is one person living in the house. You really need more bed, more bathrooms than bedrooms where you'd end up in a situation where like, well, you're like, what if everybody in my house and two guests had to take a shit at the same time? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I think you need a... My personal golden ratio is like two to one. Two to one is, is even like luxurious. I think you could easily make do. I'm, 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 we're a family of three. If you've got more kids or, you know, you've got the older generation living with you, maybe it's different. I think we could do a three-bedroom, one-bath. I would just hold my shit. I, I would prefer three-bedroom, one-and-a-half. So that at least if, like, my daughter's taking a 50-minute shower when she's a teenager, I could at least take a poop in the, in the toilet downstairs. Three to 1.5 is the way to go. I don't know, man. Like, I didn't grow up that long ago. And I didn't grow up, like, hard. I'm trying to... The first place I lived with my parents is me and my two parents. Two bedrooms, one bath. Then we moved to a place. We, we shared a duplex with our grandparents. We had the, the ground floor. We had two bedrooms, one bath. Then we moved to a suburban house it was a new build it was 
three bedrooms, one and a half baths. And I was like, this is totally fine. I never even ran into trouble. I don't know what it is now. Like, it's a, whenever people are like looking for their starter home and they're like, oh, I need like three bedrooms, four and a half bathrooms. Like, what the hell is going on? Well, you just, I, you have like two toilets you never, ever use in your house. Anyway, sorry. I'm just <laughs> like the toilet, the bed is being used like a third of the day. A toilet is being used like, I don't even know. At most, like 3% of the day, just take turns. Showers, admittedly, is a little different. Like the sh especially if, the, if all the shower demand is clumped up. You might need someone in the family to take a bullet and like turn their morning shower into a nighttime shower or wake up 30 minutes early or something like that. Anyway, listen, I, what did we We said 3.3 and that was too high, I think. Or was that too low? <laughs> it was too high. We did 2.75. He's crazy. You're a Housel Baron. Russell Wilson has 12 bathrooms. Is that too few? See, that's just, it's madness. I mean, if you're a professional athlete, it's a different story, you know, because, like, you're not living in the real world. But whenever I hear, like, a normie say, like, oh, I'd, my house only has four bathrooms, like, four bedrooms, four baths, I'm like, what are you hosting, like, uh... I mean, you, have you ever been in, like, a bar? A bar has, like, one and a half bathrooms. There's, like, two places to piss and one place to shit or, like, do drugs. And there's... 1500 people inside of the bar they make it work as long as the health inspector doesn't come in but you in your house you need you need like double that what's wrong with you okay this is time guesser we gotta move our camera at some point but Listen, I don't know what's happening here. I think this is Alcatraz. <laughs> Maybe this is the opening of Alcatraz in sunny San Francisco. There's Alcatraz. I got to be honest, it looks an awful lot like the, the image here. So they would be on a boat just off of the coast of Alcatraz. And this is probably, just to me, I'm, I have no idea when Alcatraz was building. I'm going to say it was 1933. I, guess, I don't know. I'm going to hedge my bets. So I'm going to say it was 1950. It was 1946. Aftermath from the Battle of Alcatraz, where Marines fought the island after two prisoners took over. I had no idea. Never heard of it in my life. The Battle of Alcatraz. Two prisoners. Yeah. <laughs> they really sent in the Marines after two prisoners. Oh, man. This is St. Patrick's Day. Everybody in this photo is American. You can just tell. I mean, I got to guess that this is someone in chat just said Boston. You threw me for a loop, but I'm going to I'm going to stick with my guns. This doesn't look like Boston. This is like more European architecture, in my opinion. I'm going to say that this is Dublin because that's like the that's Occam's razor on this one. And this is. Uh, this is Dublin. Twenty nineteen. It was 2014, but it was Dublin. Okay, we got that. Nothing wrong with that. Holy cow. Shit is like, uh, uh, Twitter accounts are always like, why don't we make architecture like this anymore? And they'll show like a building that only houses like... Um, books or like archives or something like that and then they'll compare it with like an apartment building that stores uh or that houses 1500 people anyway i mean that is that's some incredible architecture don't get me wrong i have no idea but they're on skis and this looks this could be second world war garb 
doesn't look like the first world war to me. I don't know if there was much ski combat in the... I don't know, man. Like, I'm kind of losing it. Could this be Finland in the Winter War in, like, 1941? I'm, I'm, it's a bit of a stab, but we do tend to get a lot of, like, Finnish guesses in, in Time Guesser. Okay, it was Leningrad, 1943. But still, I'm very happy with my 9,001 there. This is Operation Iraqi Freedom. This must be Baghdad. Oh, yeah, they were on skis, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> this must be Iraq, like Baghdad, 2003. 2003. 2000, that sounds right. You got it spot on, but you were three kilometers away. So that's still, this is going to be an amazing time guesser. I think that this is London during the Blitz. I don't know. Maybe I'm making myself look like a fool and this is actually like Notre Dame. But I feel like this is London during the Blitz, which is like, that's St. Paul's Cathedral. I don't exactly know where St. Paul's Cathedral is. I went there once, but I took a bus. So like, You know, it's, let's not get too precious with it. I think I'll just be happy to be, like, in the right ballpark here. And um, that would be, like, when was the Battle of Britain? 1940, 1940, 40, 41, 41, I think. I'm going into the 2000s for some reason. Maybe 1940. Let's go 41. It was 1940. <laughs> We're really good though. That's an amazing guess. 9909. Final score 47,025. Oh, fuck. Sheesh. That's the best score we're probably ever going to get in Time Guesser, but I'll take it. My dumbass thought Helsinki was St. Petersburg, or vice versa. So I thought St. Petersburg was Helsinki. What the hell was I thinking? Okay, now there's a very interesting one, okay? Normal house. Looks like a nice city. I'm assuming maybe you get... I mean, if you get the whole house... It's a big place. If you get, like, one... Half of it or something like that. I mean, we got to we gotta learn some more information. Start me off at just 400,000. I'm just getting a bead for it. That's too, that's too high, okay? Maybe it's just it's one unit then. It's in D.C., though. Is this where Frank uh, Underwood lived? I don't think it's going to be too much lower. I'll, I'll take a 370. It's a condo. So it's, maybe it's even just one of these. I still don't want to take it much lower. I'll go down 340, but DC, I know the real estate market's crazy, right? I'm, I'm actually, oh, it's only 450 square feet. Holy fuck. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I don't know, that's not even like one. We were talking about the whole thing. Then we were talking about one half. I'm pretty sure that's one room. Also, no price appreciation from 2015 to 2023 when the overall real estate market in North America went up like, you know, 45% or something like that. I mean, this is what it would cost in Vancouver, honestly. 450 square feet. You'd probably be paying around, I would say... <laughs> I mean, you would probably be not built in 1925, but it would probably be like 450,000 plus Canadian, if I had to guess. Depends on the neighborhood, I guess. How can people buy a house? Didn't you hear Elon Musk? He said when, real or when uh, interest rates go up, now you can afford uh, a house for less money. The economy understander has logged on. Let 
Okay. And that's it. That's the dulls slash marker. I also got the hurdle today. Okay. We're never going to go back to hurdle full time. Okay. But two people told me they got the hurdle today. So I'm willing to possibly embarrass myself. That's so gettable, man. That hair. I got to just remember Jay saying he got his in one guess. That hair, though. That's Dolph Lundgren's hair. I don't know who this is. Is this some um, Zach Parise? He does play in the East. He does play in the Metro. He's younger. He's not from America. My days of not watching Eastern Conference hockey are coming back to haunt me. This is Lance Bass. I hate Hurdle. Why did I let you trick me into playing this? <laughs> it's so, so fucking embarrassing. This is Nino Niederreiter. He doesn't even play in the... I, how out of uh, touch am I? I thought he played for the... Um, I don't know. I thought he played for the, the Hurricanes. My name's Nino. Maybe he plays for the Devils. It's not Jack Hughes. Maybe it's Sharon, uh, Sharon Govich. Whoa! How did I get it? Well, like at the trade deadline, whenever Jay would ask, what do you guys want for Quinn Hughes? I would say the starting price is Sharon Govich. How do I know Sharon Govich's name? When the Devils came to Vancouver, we had tickets for the game and he scored two goals against us. Before that, I'd never heard of him. I don't think I've ever heard of him since either. Nice hair though. I'm not saying he's bad. He's a healthy scratch now. What, because you got uh, Curtis Lazar on the team? If he's getting scratched for Curtis Lazar, he's, he's roasted, man. Like, I think Curtis Lazar played like 50 games for the Canucks this season. I think he had like zero goals, three assists. 